To prevent an artificial intelligence from becoming dangerous to us, what measures do you think need to be taken and how should we best implement them? Neil. Uh, I don't fear. The question assumes that that's going to happen. Now, maybe we feel that way because every movie that shows artificial intelligence has that happen, all right? So, I, but I'm fearless about this. As our computing power gets better, as our machines get better, yeah, we will program machines to do stuff we need them to do. By the way, we've been doing that forever. I mean, ever since we've had machines and ever since we've had computers. But we've never, we've never had offensive autonomous killing robots before. Yes, killer we do. Robots. We've programmed it. Yes. Not they're, autonomous ones. Yes, well, they're, well they're, make autonomous they're, they're called target. guided missiles. Yeah. I, I, we have guided missiles that can find their target and destroy their target. We don't call them artificial intelligence, but that exactly, that's exactly what they are. We use our brain to put our motives into the chip that is in a missile to kill people and break stuff, okay? Because that's what the military does. We are already doing that, but in a very controlled way. That's what, that will just continue. The computers beat us at chess. Computers beat us at Jeopardy, okay? That wasn't the end of the world when that happened. You didn't have people committing suicide when that, when that day arose. With oh, I was pretty sad when Kasparov got beaten by a deeper blue, no, I'll be honest with you. Okay, but uh, fine, okay. That very but, personally. But so, so the Hubble telescope is a robot. The, the, the machines that build your automobiles are robots. All right? This idea that we're going to create a humanoid that is going to... No! That's the... But, Neil, but Neil you, you, you tend to trust... You, you... You're doing a very good impersonation. I know. <laughs> We've lost Neil. We've lost Neil. <laughs> Neil's gone rogue. Program. <laughs> OK, Robbie. Um, now, look, um, a thousand of the world's leading AI researchers recently, as you probably know, put together an open letter where they said this must be stopped. We can't allow uh, this movement to the technology of autonomous killing machines. And they, they for example, cite uh, what's likely to happen in the future. For example, swarms of insect-sized uh, bombs, drones, that can buzz up beside someone and blow up beside their head. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, this is the future in a way. OK, so in, uh, in the late 19 aughts, is that a sentence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there was a, there was a, I remember reading an op-ed, and it may have been Scientific American, but one of the science journals of the day, that was concerned about the recent invention of the aer aeroplane. Because what it means is the aeroplane can now fly in the air across the borders of sovereign nations and drop nitroglycerin canisters on unsuspecting people. Mm. And so that, so planes were a bad thing, that we should not have airplanes. Well, of course, we do drop bombs across the borders of sovereign nations, but airplanes also do very good things. And so, so uh, is the problem the technology, or is the problem the diabolical politic that uses the technology for nefarious power uh, ploy uh, hegemonistic gains? And so... So the issue here is you don't stop the technology, you monitor our conduct as human beings in the face of it. Adam, two killer words. robots. First of all, two words, Will Smith. As long as we've got Will Smith, we're cool. <laughs> he can deal with that. <laughs> I would, in terms of the impact that that sort of intelligence and robotics, et cetera, could have on humanity, I'd be far more concerned about the swathes of jobs, the changes to economic structures and impacts. They're talking in the United States, tens of millions of people whose jobs simply won't exist. Yeah, 20, but you sound like the people from, from the Industrial Revolution, what? worried that this is what defined the Luddite movement, all right? So that all of a sudden there'll be no jobs for anybody because robots took up all the jobs. Well, we now need jobs of people to fix the robots. We I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you're going to have enough robot repair jobs <laughs> to replace... <laughs> that, that's you, you, no, no, for... no, no, but there, there was a report by PwC in Australia recently suggested 44% of all jobs currently held are in industries that will face significant digital disruption over the next yes, few years. Yes, but other things arise. Yes. But, but that's, that's ludistic. No, but at the time... 
Who, who would have thought? I, I used to do this. I used to, there used to be something called a phone book and, uh, and the yellow pages. And you'd look through it and you'd see what was advertised in them. And one of the great pastimes is, decade by decade, look at what is there in one decade and it's completely missing in the next. Like buggy whips, no longer there, okay? Now we have computer salespeople are in the phone, well, the, ver the modern version of a phone book that did not exist before. You cannot predict what jobs we will need and will don't currently exist, but just by saying we're gonna lose jobs and then that's it? No, society moves forward. Th that should be, that's your weakest argument today. Oh, just, so, so, <laughs> I, I, just because, <clears throat> Obvious, by definition, there will be new jobs. Just because in the past, technological changes have, it seems, always created sufficient jobs to replace them, doesn't mean that automatically happens. The sort of steps that you're talking about in robotics, the sort of steps that you're talking about where a, an intelligent machine can do the job of one or dozens of people who used to work in call centres, etc., and suggesting that people who miss out on those jobs will just go and retrain as robotic repairmen, with the greatest respect, I don't think it's the strongest argument you've presented tonight either. <laughs> Okay.